19 year old Ashley Supper released her self titled EP last year, and the reaction was universally positive. Writing and performing her own music, she clearly entered hallowed ground. A native of New York State, her musical appetite began when she was six in a studio with Kisses Ace Freely. Wow. She's also the basis for the all girl group Plush and just returned from a tour where Plush opened for Alice in Chains and Bush. Whoa. She's also the spokesperson for Con Air, yes, the hair dryer people, for a relaunch of their Quick Gems product. Last week, she had her New York City debut at the Cutting Room in lovely New York City, the club that Lady Gaga was discovered at. Well, welcome, Ashley, to this program. Thank you so much for having me. I'm glad that you can join us. I, I got to tell you before I get into uh, some of the questions that we have prepared for you, that as soon as I heard your music, I was like, hey, let's let's get Ashley uh, on the show with us. Let's start playing her music on our platforms. And we're going to we're going to do that. I, I think that you have a lot of great talent and uh, love the videos, love the songs. Uh, just totally amazing. Wow, and thank I, you so much. I really appreciate it, that. You, you're very welcome. So let's start with our first question. Um, you, you have to tell us about your first meeting with Ace Freely of Kiss. And when I was a kid, if I was able to meet Ace Freely, uh, that would have been it for me. Uh, I mean, I was a big Kiss fan in the 70s. And oh my gosh, you got to meet the guitar virtuoso Ace Freely of Kiss. Ace is wonderful. I've honestly known him for most of my life. I grew up around him. He would come over to my house and meet my dad and go riding motorcycles with him. So it was kind of this weird dynamic where he was like this uncle that I never had. So I actually call him Uncle Ace to this day, funnily enough. But um, one night I was in kindergarten, maybe I was six years old and my dad was like, come on, Ash, we're going to go to the studio. And I, I was a little confused because I was a very shy kid and I didn't talk much and I didn't really want to sing in front of people. I was very embarrassed about that. But I ended up going and then we ended up recording vocals on Ace's album Anomaly and I sang backing vocals on that. Oh my <laughs> gosh, that is just incredible. Um, I, I'm not, I, I can't really remember, but did Ace Freely ever go back with Kiss and Makeup and go on tour? Would you know about that? There was a reunion tour, but I think that was not in super recent times. Yeah, it must have been maybe in the 90s. Uh, all right. I was there for that show. Smashing Pumpkins opened up for them. Amazing. <laughs> I just I just don't I just just thought of that. So um, what are some of your musical aspirations? To inspire young people to do what they love doing the same way that my idols inspired me to do what I love to do. Uh huh. I think that is my well, biggest musical aspiration. All right. Well, if we mention Lady Gaga, okay, just uh, as she was being discovered at the cutting room, do you have this goal to be as big or bigger than Lady Gaga? I mean, it's okay if that's what your goal is. It's hard to compare yourself in terms of fame to another artist and what you aspire to be in that sense, because you never know what to expect in a field of music. So I think it's good to strive high and aim your goals as high as you possibly can, but never expect. Just try now, your best. I would, I would think that's a smart approach, right? Yeah. And just be you. That's the most important Exactly. Thing. Always yeah. be authentically you because that's how Gaga got to where she is now. I mean, I remember being so young and watching, I think it was her VMAs performance where she was covered in blood weird do you remember that i was sitting in front of the tv no, and, I that no. and i was so little and i i just i don't know it moved me in some weird way i wanted to do that not uh, exactly i do i i do remember her in her wild outfits over times like that meat outfit and stuff like that that meat like, outfit you know, changed my life really oh yes. i never thought that she needed any gimmicks by the way she definitely doesn't but it adds so much and she really does put on a show incredibly right so you feel like when you go to a lady gaga concert you're getting your money's worth she she really puts her heart and soul into all of that so so maybe it, it, does that inspire you when you see artists up on stage 
giving it their all, playing a couple hours and thinking to yourself, you know what, when I have my chance, that's exactly what I'm going to do. 100%. I had the chance to see Gaga. I think it was at the Roseland Ballroom. It was one of the last shows at that venue in New York. And I was maybe 12 at that time. And just watching her give her everything to that audience moved me so deeply. It's everything that I want to do. What would you say is something, you know, that other people would, that, that they don't know about you that, that you think is kind of weird, but you know, maybe to somebody else, they're like, that's not weird at all. In what sense? I don't know. It could be any. It could be a, a particular song that you like or a particular group you like besides, you know, Ace Freely, uh, something quirky, you know, uh, whatever. Like, I could tell you a few weird things that I like. Uh, tuna sandwiches. I like peanut butter and jelly for breakfast. Um, I, you know, um, actually do like steam locomotives i uh, like looking at trains and stuff like that which is just odd stuff to most people i took a tour of a coal mine once you know that kind of stuff very cool i actually think that's so interesting um i can't touch my toes and i am a huge history <laughs> nerd history nerd okay what kind of history is your favorite i like american revolutionary war history because i took two classes in high school and shout out to my high school history teacher because he shaped my interest in history. Well, obviously he was a great teacher because you're mentioning that. Um, he was great. There was one one point I, I love American revolutionary history as well. I live in the state of New Jersey, which is the crossroads of the revolution. We had some uh, major battles here, including uh, Battle of Trenton, Bordentown and Trenton, right? Crossing yeah. uh, 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 you know, the Delaware Valley Forge, that whole thing. And even in New York, you know, not close, not too far from Putnam County, you have some interesting battle sites and, and artifacts that you can find. So it is a really great part of American history. So kudos to you. That's cool. See, now that can inspire somebody who's a bit younger in high school to go, you know what? I'm going to crack the books. I'm going to I'm going to read all about history. You know what? I'm going to stay in school. <laughs> I'm going to learn. Yeah. I'm going to stay in school and learn. It's a, it's a great thing. Um, your songs are really terrific. Uh, I you. did. And, and I said, even before the interview, I really like your uh, EP. Why don't you tell us a little bit about how it took shape? Maybe a couple of stories about recording it. How did you get your musicians together? Uh, I, I was fascinated that it's such a tight sounding group uh, as, as we say in the, in the trades. So why don't you take us a little bit through a little bit of that process? I started writing for my EP when I was around 15 years old. And one of the demos had actually made it way to Alex Altman, who is my producer to this day. And he thought that there was something there within the song. So we ended up recording all of these tracks. And it was my first time being in the studio and actually recording my own material, which was an incredible experience. I would leave high school or go from my online classes at the time to going to the studio. And I, it was just a really fun memory for me to go to that. So um, yeah, that, that was just really great. And we got the musicians together. Alex had known them because they're kind of session and local musicians and they're incredible and so versatile. And they added so much to this project that we wouldn't have been able to have without them. If, um, a young, aspiring artist was watching this interview, listening to this interview, and they wanted to write songs. You have any sort of tips of like how you would approach creating these songs? What is your, you know, uh, I guess your, your process? It sounds very cliche, but you kind of just have to let the music flow through you. I think I've written some of what I think is my best work when I do just that, maybe I'll be humming around my house while I'm cleaning things or I'll be driving and singing <laughs> to myself and taking a voice memo of it. And then I'll turn it into a song when I get home or when I have time to. Do you uh, think of the melody first or the lyrics? I think of the melody first, but sometimes there'll be some sort of lyric or message attached to that that I'll kind of structure the whole song around. 
do you have any favorite um composers uh what i would say like bernie toplin elton john combination or ed sheeran uh the people that you might look towards to uh gain inspiration about how to come up with lyrics for songs i feel like i look to the beatles a lot um lady gaga as well her songwriting is incredible Elton John too. I'm looking at an Elton John poster in my room right now. Um, there, there's so many great musicians that you can gather so much influence from, from all different genres. And I think that is another thing that is so important. Listen to music from every single genre. Never narrow yourself to one thing. Never limit yourself in that way. I think that's great. Uh, here's where I can compliment the younger generation. I noticed that they genre bend. In other words, they go from the music of the 40s to music of the 50s to music of the 60s they like the beatles they think it's all really cool to listen to cartoons and what i mean like you know the chuck berry or some of those things that you would hear at disney um they don't mind exploring classic composers or uh pop and rap and rock and all over the place and it's kind of cool because in my day if you didn't know who Pink Floyd were, was, you got an atomic wedgie, you know? So times have really changed. Yeah, I do think that's you, very interesting about this generation. And I love how we have so much access to all this music from all different time periods, thanks to streaming. Right, also too, um, how do you discover your music? Because I've noticed a lot of the kids are just sort of discovering music on TikTok and YouTube and uh, sort of uh, radio is important, but not, not so much as it used to be. I like to ask the people around me what they like to listen to, or even there was this period of time where when I was touring, I would ask strangers what their favorite song was and I would add it to like a little list and then I would listen through the list because you get really random music that way and you'll find some of your favorite songs. Well, that's a good idea. If you were to ask me, like my one of my favorite Beatles songs is I am the walrus. I am the egg man. That's my favorite too. Cuckoo, cuckoo. <laughs> Isn't that great? It's so wild. I don't even know what the, I don't even know what this song is about, right? And that's and, the and beauty I, of it. You don't have to. Yeah, yeah. You can ha use your own imagination. There's no videos that tell you how to think. Um, what was the the biggest surprise to you that you learned while in the studio or doing your craft or performing live? I think something that you learn a lot performing live is that it will never be perfect and that is what makes a great performance you don't want it to be perfect you just want it to be raw and real and you want to know how to recover from that because that what makes a good performer i think you're uh, uh spot on with that one now um let's talk about this con air uh first question do you consider yourself a fashionista i guess so right Aren't we all? <laughs> if we get dressed and we get up, yeah, and we yeah. Look at me. I look like I look We're like uh, Nick Mason. Way. Nick Mason from Pink Floyd here. Um, <laughs> you yeah, love Pink Floyd. Yeah, I do. It really do. It's my favorite band, and Led Zeppelin, of course. Um, so tell us about Conair and how you got involved with the whole hair drying thing. I mean, I, I just like let it air dry, but you know, good hair dryer is a key to success. I think with your hair. I think so too. So growing up, I actually adored using the Quick Gems product. I would put the little gems in my hair and I would walk around and that would be my life. I loved the gems. So I, it's honestly so incredible to me that I get to be the face of the new re-release of Quick Gems with Conair. All right. Um, can you tell me what Quick Gems are? Quick gems, they're little hair gems and they, there's like this little applicator and you take a little strand of hair and you press the button and you get a gem in your hair. Oh, cool. All right. Got it. That's awesome. Maybe I'll try that one day. You uh, should. Yeah, definitely. Oh, yeah. I, I would be a big hit at the office. Well, Ashley, Supa, did I say it correctly? Yes. Okay. Thank you so much for spending your time with us. Uh, I look forward to seeing you live uh, in concert one of these days uh, when maybe Lady Gaga is opening up for Ashley. <laughs>
Or maybe I get to be within five feet of Lady Gaga. Hey, it, it's not an impossibility. That's my dream. <laughs> I never thought that I would interview Sir Paul either, but it happened. You just got to have that vision in your mind and it'll somehow, what I've noticed is you, you sort of like your mind makes it happen somehow. If you dream it, you can do it. Absolutely. 